on TBSW episode 119, Mali Mum. Monkey for my girl. Mushroom sneakers. Sneeth, sneaker authentication. Bill and Melinda Gates on episode 119 on TBSW. The B side word. Welcome to the B-Side Word. We are a group of friends who will get together to share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I am Devon and I'm here with Emma. Hello. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alexander. Ahoy. Ah, okay. Well, we'll jump right into it then as Peter Philip D'Souza. What's his name? <laughs> I like that guy. Philip D'Souza. Continue. Philip. That guy says. Anyway, so this mother, this woman actually from mm. Mali, uh, her name is Halima, maybe Halima Sise or Kise. Anyway, I don't know. Sise. Sise. Yeah. She was discovered, don't read, she was discovered to be expecting seven babies, which is extremely uh, rare. I mean... That's a lot of They're babies. called non-uplets. No, 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 no. Septuplets. Septup, septuplets. No. Yeah, seven. Is oh, septuplets. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're called septuplets and yeah. it's extremely rare. Authorities found out about her septuplets and she, she was in Mali. She was in a Mali hospital for a couple of weeks and they found out and thought, nah, she needs to go to somewhere where they can handle these seven babies. So they flew her to Casablanca. In Morocco, <laughs> yeah, and she stayed in hospital for five weeks, and then she had a cesarean section, in which they found another two babies. So this mum from Mali had non-uplets because she had nine babies, and they didn't know at all about the other two babies. She had scans in Mali. She had scans in Morocco. All they ever picked up was seven babies, but there was two other babies hiding. So, <laughs> where, where, where do you hide in a womb? I don't. I yeah. well, I mean, I was thinking the same thing. How do you like? I'll be looking at the doctors. Like, how do you miss two babies? Because there's so I many think it's in a beans there. in the jar situation. Like, right? there's, there's just, just enough. So how do you count many in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, know, I know how to count to nine, not Lena. <laughs> And they're all weighed between about 500 grams and a kilo each, which is so is that tiny. tiny. Oh, it is so tiny. Mm. And 500 grams. That's tiny. To compare, ours are about 3.7, 3.8 kilos. Oh, we got big babies. Which were av- yeah, which are pretty average size. Average size babies. But 500 average grams size babies, and a kilo. Big heads, though. <laughs> big heads. <laughs> Jesus. So are they all alive? They were all alive when they were born. So crazy. Are they still alive? I don't. Well, this is a very new thing. Can I ask? Because they get their nutrients from the belly button, right? Mm-hmm. So there's all these umbilical cords? From the placenta. The placenta. I know, but they're still to the umbilical cords. <sighs> That's how they get the nutrients. It gets pumped straight into yeah, there. Yes, yes. So you're like... So this baby is just hanging out. Oh man, that'd be crazy. That that's an alien. Um, are you like envisioning with the? What do you mean? Where do they poop? Everywhere. The babies. Well, they so get their food from babies, inside. They, they still have to release. Extra. Typically, they actually don't poop. Yeah, until they they actually can. It's not that common, and if it happens, it can you like. They the woman can get like infections or something. Oh. So if the baby's like overdue or something uh, over forty weeks, they might actually do My a poo. Hurting. But it's not that common. Usually their first poo is after they've been born and I've they've had milk. I've never been milk. pregnant, but my bed my belly's hurting. And it's very tar like. <laughs> it's very sticky and tar like. You got th- you got to think, Siege. Your um, your digestive system. Is all about taking out the nutrients that you need, and then your poop is just all the stuff you don't need. But yeah. they're only going to give the babies what they need. Mm. Look how tiny so the babies have are. The need for the... Mm. Okay, I was just thinking like, oh, they're tiny. maybe the bo- human body can absorb like one child's excrement, but nine—that's a lot. No, I yeah. mean this. <laughs> this is one of those things. Like, I saw someone saying, 
Uh, I saw two, two of my favourite comments about this were, one was, well, some people are getting babies for Christmas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the other being about, I'd have to give them away like it was a litter. <laughs> a puppy litter. Oh. Um, like a puppy litter. Like how, who can prepare for that? Oh, from man. so many so many aspects i mean i was just saying to you... to the girls earlier that like you actually would need more pairs of hands because these babies especially newborns they feed very frequently is like you need you're gonna need extra help you can't physically feed them all at the same time unless you come up with a device that but then as newborns you need to make sure they're not you know choking and stuff too and oh shit oh yeah i remember when we had our first first kid and that was demanding as hell for you and um yeah me and you were going to the movies yeah yeah i don't know why you were complaining um i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't complaining i was i was um like saying my blessings like thanking my blessings but nine nine babies like you, you know when you see you know when quiet. you see the dogs the baby dog uh mother dogs and the mother pigs and stuff and then they or like you see six six of the kids like latching onto all the you can't do that as a human two at a time and if yeah. one's crying jeez and not just that to two at a time but after I'm, I'm i'm assuming after a while you'd get you'd be empty no the, the it's supply and demand it's supply and demand so like if if the baby if they need more, then they produce more. Hold on, but like when you say supply and demand, this is nine. Yeah, so to produce. So you'd be able to. Supp- I'm I'm not sure about women's yeah, I, breasts. I, I see what CJ is saying. Food, but I, I, would they be able to produce for nine? It's not nine because of three kilos. It's nine of five hundred. Like so, Emma's saying a normal kid. But eventually, is- they're gonna be three kilos. Yeah, I, I get it, but like they're not they're not now. So like at the when the our first one was three point five or nearly four kilos, that's eight. That's uh, potentially eight of these kids if they're about five hundred grams each. Yeah, but I assume that they're that size because of, and this is gonna sound weird, but kind of like the goldfish thing. Like you grow to the size of your tank. Like there just wasn't room for them to keep growing, yeah, yeah, and yeah, they weren't yeah, getting yeah, enough yeah, nutrients. Yeah. That's right. But as yeah. they get fed, they're probably going to rapidly grow comparative mm. to a normal they, baby. Would they rapidly grow? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. they should would stack they? on some weight. Yeah. But I mean, to the point of the growth the speed of a uh, 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 single child, would they would their growth be? Oh, like no, like it'll take a little bit longer, but. They'll, they'll stack it on. Do they stay in the um, hospitals longer? Cause they will be because I think they're premature. Yeah, they'll be in incubators yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now go beyond the physical demand. What the financial demand? Nine. Uh, but I reckon if you have nine children, it's so out there that the government will probably give you quite a bit of a hand. They have to, right? Surely. Because mm. there's no way you can financially support nine children. I don't know. Like even if in it's Mali, on, in Mali, is that what even if it's in behind Mali? closed doors? Oh, because they, oh yeah. The pol- I would the imagine pol- them for advertising and things like that. What? Well, I would. I would imagine. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I don't know about advertising, but I'd imagine from a perspective of they're in, they're a global news story. This person. So if all these kids start dying off because they couldn't afford to oh, take care right, of them, right, that right. wouldn't look good on the country. Hmm. I, I, I was thinking more in the sense where they might have them like. Come to Bali, you might have nine children. Like, use them as a marketing tool. What? What? <laughs> Can you walk hey. me through this advertisement? Did, did, Can did, you walk did, me did, through wasn't it? Wasn't there a TV show a few years ago about a family that had like seven kids or eight kids? Oh, the Octo Mum. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't she get like a TV? Didn't she get a TV show? Yeah. yeah. I think that's more Something of intrigue. Could happen. Not, not for replication Something purposes. Similar. Something similar could happen. So, how much did that? How much did she bring in in um, in tourism for America? <laughs> well, I don't know, but this is Mali, man. This is not America. <laughs> I've come here to see the sights: the Grand Canyon, the Statue of Liberty, the Octomum. <laughs> <laughs> Octomum would be first on my list. <laughs> so, another another situation. So imagine this is 
the the parents of the group imagine this happened to you okay and your your firstborn is actually nine born hmm. now imagine in this scenario i was living there with a partner married no children rachel ray no children would you yep. float the idea of you yep. take three you yep. take three we'll yep. keep three yep 100 percent. we'll yep. do it like that yep <laughs> As soon as you said Rachel, Alexander, yep. Yep. <laughs> I already said yes. But the poor kids will be like, why did my mummy choose to give me away to auntie? No, it's or rotation. Uncle? It's on rotation. <laughs> so you just swap the three, the three sets constantly around. We'll just have to build a complex. Compound. Do you know the, do you know the brutal the part as well? Speaking of that rotation, I hadn't even considered this. What if they were all identical? <laughs> That's effed up. Mate. That's effed up. <laughs> Could you imagine? Right. I don't know if you if you actually have heard of this. It's actually not new, but I thought, oh. <laughs> so this dude, this Kiwi dude, John, John <laughs> Casford. Yeah. John Owen Casford, actually. So he decided he had a girlfriend <laughs> and he took her to Wellington Zoo. Yeah. And whilst they were there, they were near a monkey enclosure. Yeah. And he said it was like something out of a movie. The little monkey came up and stuck its little paw up on the window against her hand. Aww. So like that. Yeah. And she said, oh, my God, I want one of those. And I, And then he thought. F, that's what I'm going to get her. Right? A monkey. So, so, next thing, two in the morning, he broke into Wellington Zoo. What the? He climbed in and went and got it. So, he said he was too scared to stick his arm, like, in the, like, into where I guess it was sleeping or whatever and reach around. So, he lit a lighter and he goes, I seen his little eyes looking and grabbed it and shoved it in my bag and left. Right. And then he's like, oh, okay, there's a big fence. Right. I'll climb it. I'll climb it. And then he realized at the top of the fence was electric fence. Like, <laughs> electric. And he's like, ah, oh, okay. I will, I will basically, I think he said he'll just like try and push off and jump over it. Right. Well, can I, can I stop right Wait. there? He got in. Yeah. He that's broke what into like, the how, Why didn't he how go How did he out realize the this fence on the way out, not on the way in? Don't know. So there's something wrong with this guy already. He was high. <laughs> yeah. So that's a legit. That was high. He was actually high. That was so high. he that he that goes, all right. I will. I'll, I'll I'll just push off and I'll jump over. Yeah. He made it to the top of the fence, climbed up. He fell more than eight meters onto concrete, blew his teeth out, broke a leg. Got up, continued. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he went to the hospital. He put his leg in a um, cast. My only concern is at this stage, is the monkey all right? So yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. So legs in a cast, he fixed up his teeth, I guess, maybe at the hospital. And then next day he's like, oh, catch up with the old missus for a date because it was her birthday. Then he sees the cops and he starts running, but he's got a broken leg. So they caught up with him. And By walking slowly. He was sentenced and he was sentenced. He had also unrelated incidences of violence and unprovoked, like, yeah, assault on, you know, a man at his car waiting at a traffic so light. So this guy, is he breaks the law a lot, but he's a romantic at the same time. Yeah. He, he assaulted a Wellington City Council community safety officer. Anyway, he yeah. went to jail on his girlfriend's birthday and I think he got three years or something. He got three years. Yeah. Anyway. I, I hope you mean on his ex-girlfriend's birthday. Well, so then uh, after going to jail, they, they didn't stay together. But so this comedian who was interviewing him after, Guy Williams is the comedian's yeah. name. Uh, he's like, I'm going to help you win your girl back. So they reenacted the scene in 10 Things I Hate About You. Mm -hmm. And they're singing, can't take my eyes off, off of you. you. Um, to a band in a cricket stadium. 
<laughs> whilst his ex was sitting in the bleachers and then they were like hugging and uh, maybe I think they might have got back together. <laughs> I don't know. But the monkeys, the poor monkeys, the judge said, I don't know what happened in the squirrel monkey enclosure. The squirrel monkeys know, but I don't know. You you say you couldn't find them and I don't speak squirrel, but all I know is by daybreak, all the monkeys were distressed. Two of them were injured. You had a broken leg, two fractured teeth, a sprained ankle and bruises on your back. But like one of the monkeys had a hematoma on its elbow. What's a hematoma? Like a blood. When the bone pokes out? Bump. It's like a blood, oh, blood, like a big bump with blood, filled with blood. Yeah. Um, they were like distressed. Others had scratches. I think he stole more than one. I don't know. Or he injured more what than one. Maybe he stole, he stole. Maybe he stole one and like went over the fence, but he... Did something to others. I don't know. What was the one in the bag? Did they find the one in the bag? I don't know. I, I still don't understand. <laughs> he got into the jail, uh, into the zoo and then he decided to climb the wall that he didn't obviously climb. <laughs> On the Do way. you want to see him? <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll share him. We'll share. We'll share him so you get an idea. I don't know. Uh, I've got a song uh, for you. Yeah. What? I was gonna treat my girl. <laughs> then I got high. Hey, hey, I was hey, gonna get hey, a dead. squirrel monkey. Then I got high. Hey, I tried hey, to hey. jump the wall, <laughs> and I know why. Hey, hey, hey. hey. I got high. I got high. I got high. Let's listen to it from his thingy. to the point where he's That's breaking into Wellington Zoo to steal a monkey. Love. So it began when you were on a date with your girlfriend at the zoo. Yeah, and this little monkey come up and stuck its little paw up on the window against their hand, like something out of a movie. She said, oh my God, I want one of those. And I thought, fuck, that's what I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna go get her that monkey. See? Next thing, climbed in there and went and got it. Two in the morning. Can't be easy to catch a monkey. I was too scared to stick my arm in there and just reach around, you know? So I like lit the lighter, flick, 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 and I just seen these little eyes looking and grabbed it. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you know what I'm thinking the whole scared. time while watching this? Yeah. <laughs> this guy is the Australian Ali G. Like, yes! That's exactly what this looks like. <laughs> is his partner's name Julie? <laughs> Only Julie. <laughs> For my jewelry. All this, right, let's continue. This, let's continue. It looks like a piss take. So I fall, <laughs> and then I miss my landing area, and then I fell like eight, nine meters onto Fuck. a big concrete running track. Okay. Blew all my teeth out, broke my leg. So when you said you blew all your teeth out, <laughs> so that was the plan. Yeah, teeth Did you gone. see the, um, yeah. the interview? So you fell like. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's probably thinking, mate, how did you get in? <laughs> You get in ground shock ever. So you go like an eight meter drop, <laughs> yeah, and you get the oh, meanest man. ground shock ever. It's still my teeth. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, I'm, so, I'm so upset that they didn't ask him that question. Oh. Well, that was only a short clip, it's probably on YouTube. Go find it if you want. His name was John Owen Casford. He doesn't look like a guy that um, is full of malice, he seems a guy that's harmless and he just. He was high. He seems like a, but he's he had like other a guy assault, who's full of stupidity. But he's had other assault and violent things. I, I feel like, he, I f look, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. He seems very charming to me. He's charmed me. Would you date? Would you? Would you go out with him? Uh, I don't know. I'd hang out with him until he did me wrong. Which would be in the first five minutes. <laughs> then you I'd leave him. Still your monkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was a good story. I like that story. Mm, that was a good yeah, story. It was good. Get Ev to the everything. Point. Get to everything. The point. <laughs> so Adidas have, instead of using leather for the upper part of their shoes, yeah, they have begun growing and using mushrooms. A specific mushroom, in fact, called the myceliumis. Now, what does that remind you of, mycelium? Metamucil? No. Try again. Helium? No. What did we watch on Netflix where they have mycelium? I don't, Fish. No. I, don't know. I was asleep. Mm. Star Trek. Star Trek. 
remember and they were learning how to jump and they're using the mycelium fungi anyway so Adidas are growing these mushrooms to use as a material to make the upper parts of sneakers oh nice and so they use the underground root structure of the mycelium whatever it's called and it's versatile it looks like leather feels like leather but it's completely natural there's no plastics at all needed to make them takes quite a lot of space to grow it but guess what it only takes two weeks to grow oh doesn't need any light yeah to grow yeah because mushrooms grow in the dark well not all of them but yeah they're they're shy no they're fungi they have to grow No, not all of them what about the mushrooms that grow in the Gardens and the forests and stuff. They typically grow under, like, under other things. Yeah. So they don't get the light. Like, other root of trees and stuff. They're fungi. What about the ones that grow in our front garden? Do they grow higher than the grass? Yes. Like, a lot higher than the grass? Yeah. What? Are you you sure? Yes. Fungi? Yeah, fungi. Fungi don't... I don't believe they use sunlight to grow. That's why they're not green as well, because they don't like photosynthesize and stuff. I don't know if they use sunlight to grow, but they can grow in light. Yeah, but it's not a requirement for them to grow. Ah, uh, okay. No, no, I don't think it's a requirement necessarily. This is such a side tangent. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so I've got a question with this. Yeah. More about animals to plants and our perception of these things. Do you think in the future there'll be a point where newer generations start saying can't kill plants? What did you say? Because at the moment, like, at the moment, you it's know, crossed my we mind. Farm, we farm animals yeah. for different reasons. One of them being leather. They use the leather off of cows, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we plant based alternative. No harm. Do you think, but if you think historically that wasn't a th- like, no one cared. It's only as we've become the society we are today and now we look at that in that way. Do you think in the future, a uh, future society will look at plants in the same way that we look at animals now? So you can't just yeah, grow plants to, to kill them, to use them Delicious. for leather. Oh, man. I mean, possibly. I hope I'm not there for that. Well, we, it's kind of sad because oh, geez. I really <laughs> hope it, it is kind of sad be, when we found out that the plants can squeal and, and, and they feel pain and they can make noise. What? Yeah. Like, remember? Yeah, they, is, they, I've known they, since I did GCSE. We talked about it on the podcast. This. Yeah, I know. I was just. If they, if they like need water and they or they're whatever or they've been cut or injured, yeah. they can squeal. We just can't hear it. Yeah, their their frequency is too high or low, or they're off their spectrum. That's wild. <sighs> yeah, I don't want to be there for that. I don't want to be there for the. Please don't hurt the plants. I don't want to. Why? I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that rubbish. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's rubbish. We've got to do something. We like, come on, guys. We're we're gonna hurt someone. I mean, we min- minimum we minimize our impact on the world, but something we've got to do something. It's gonna turn to cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then we're gonna hit a human being squeal as we cut them up and eat them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know. So that's added us. Whether or not I don't know how big this will be. <laughs> Whether they'll... That's interesting. I like... Yeah. I like... Um, instead of... what Do they n- still use animals to do their sneakers before this? I would have assumed so because it or, would have been leather. Is it mostly plastic though? It's not all leather now, is it? Like all the Adidas stuff and that? Isn't it mostly plastic? No, it's not. I think, uh, they're, I I think they're like standard, you know, like the the iconic sneaker. I think... I think leather, right? Yeah. It said in the article though that Adidas are looking to get rid of all that. They're trying to be carbon neutral by 2050 by 20 i don't know if it was i don't know if it was nike or adidas but they said they had a a reusable shoe they have plastic yeah i I think they're all reusable because you can put them on multiple times (sighs) 
I well, mean this, the material. Well, these know. ones can be given back to the earth, I guess, because they just so, biodegrade after. I don't know how long. I would, to throw another wrinkle in whether this is good or not, and this is that trade-off situation, isn't it? Where how much space of mushroom growth do you need to get the equivalent amount of leather they use for one cow? Oh, and wow. do they have to do things like deforest in order to get enough space to grow enough leather? To- <laughs> oh, no. Well, it, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's hard, <laughs> oh. isn't it? Well, I'm Alex just, Ben, well, Alex just ben he just killed the mood. He just killed the mood there. Yeah. Look, Adidas uses ocean plastics for the upper, uh, oh. upper form of their parts of their shoes. And clothing, like jerseys. That's pretty cool. So they could just go to the Great Ocean Garbage Patch and collect heaps of plastic and just use that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, nice. This is just a a little quick thing, and it's kind of continuing on from the sneaker the sneaker discussion we just had, but eBay is introducing a new authentication step process for sneakers. So because as the sneaker business for, uh, what, what do you call it? Investing is pretty hot, right? People are buying, selling, buying, selling. For example, a pair of sneakers that Sample. sold last year for 240 bucks in Foot Locker, there's one of them that was worth ten thousand dollars this year. What? Yeah. What? Foot Locker in the USA or here? Or, or maybe it wasn't ten thousand. Maybe it was two thousand. Whatever. It was That's worth a, big a difference. lot. A lot more. Yeah, eight thousand. But, but there's there are people that spend ten grand on sneakers, right? Mm. For example. Some. Um, yeah, rich now, people. Because obviously sneakers is a good investment at the moment. No, it's not. <laughs> there is- House is a good investment. Yes, but to, to Ray, for example, he buys and sells, buys and sells, buys and sells. Yeah. And he's making quite a bit of money from it. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's a family, that's our family member. Anywho, so there's a lot of fakes happening. Yeah. Because of the fakes, eBay have decided that before sending the sneakers to the customer, they will send it off to the US to an authenticator to check that the product is real now. Stuff Wouldn't that, that make the sneakers much more expensive? Stuff that. Well, how, how do you it know, disappears? Oh, do you know where I see thinking. this going? Where? And probably pretty rapidly as well. Mm. Manufactured sneakers with NFTs attached to them. Yeah. Because that would be an instant authentication. Bitcoin. That's part of the Bitcoin. Bitcoin. It's not a Bitcoin, is it? It's a what is that? It's, it's block blockchain technology. Blockchain. So the NFT non fungible tokens. That's right. Essentially, it's, it's a way to verify the origin of something. So when say Nike <gasps> makes the shoe, they would attach an NFT to every pair of shoe. Yes. And then whenever it's sold, you'd be able to track exactly where that shoe has been, where it's come from, that it yeah. was actually manufactured from. Ha, ha, I can definitely see that starting to happen. How, how do they um, attach it to the shoe? The NFT? The yeah, the NFT. You wouldn't literally have to attach it to the shoe. Like You'd have it as part of the sale. So when Nike sells it to the store, yeah, then it would be affiliated with that shoe. So they'd have a record of, because each shoe would have like their own barcode or whatever. It'd be registered that barcode or that shoe with that NFT. And then when oh, you sell it yeah, to the yeah, customer. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So okay. it's a responsibility of the person who has it yeah. to keep them attached. Yeah. Um, so you, like you could put it underneath the sole. Like, you know how there's an insole? You can put the barcode in there sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, it's a responsibility then. So if you were a reseller, if yeah. you bought the shoe... It'd be your to, to, to make sure you keep yes. that proof of NFT. I think the NFT would be actually more valuable than the actual shoe then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, eBay has said that they're not going to charge anyone for these, or this authentication process. It will be a free service. It's going to be a multi-point inspection. They'll be verifying the box, sizing labels, soles, stitching logos, heel tabs, laces, and more, such as sniffing the glue to make sure that it is real. They, they must be making... They must have decided that they're going to make a killing from doing this. Because why would you as a business now create a service that you're not going to charge anyone for like that's not a thing people don't mm. do that yeah 
So they must have decided if we do this, we're probably going to get more sneaker sales through us. Oh. Yeah. They've got to be well, making that money back somehow. So what I was saying with Ray is he was mentioning that there was a lot of sneakers going missing because in Sydney, they all go to this particular warehouse, mm. I think near Stratfield or something. Like all the sneakers end up there. Um, to be posted to the customer and a lot were going missing because they've got this Facebook group and there was just heaps going missing. That's just, and you know, people are spending big money, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Once a pair is verified as authentic, the left sneaker receives a unique NFC. <gasps> That's NFT. We're talking about NFTs. Not oh, NFC. Well, the left sneaker receives a unique NFC enabled tag that provides detailed information about the pair's authenticity. Yeah, you're right, Alexander. It's going to be NFT soon. Do you know what I'm just thinking about? You, we're, only, we're only a few letters away. <laughs> this is only for new sneakers over 150 US dollars or more and pre owned conditions sold for 300 US dollars or more. Right, so Bill and Melinda. Uh, their divorce day came, I guess. And that was really quick, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't even know when it started. Well, I feel like it was only in the headlines not that long ago. It was just in the headlines, but it's probably happening. A, like, yeah, probably they've, happening. they've been arranged for this for a while because they've had yeah. asset transfers and stuff. And plus, they're extremely rich, yeah. so they could probably move up in the court, court system. Yeah, in saying that, the Netflix show just came out last year with him, and they were in they were in that together. But yeah. anyway, um, they might maybe they're not hating. Yeah, each other, it's probably it. amicable. Yeah, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. So he has only gone and transferred two point four billion dollars worth of shares on the day of their divorce yeah. over to Melinda. So I'll just run you down what this included. How is she going to live? 600 million more than initially thought, by the way. But anyway, he shuffled 1.8 bill through Cascade Investment. Well, which you've is got a to holding... break down the portfolio of yeah. shares that she's getting. Yes. So uh, that was that includes a holding company that Bill formed to manage his financial assets. That's Cascade Invest Investment. That's his holding company. So, so the next thing she got was one point five billion in shares of Canadian National Railway. Wow. She got over three hundred million in Auto Nation stock, whatever that is. One hundred and twenty million stake in Co Coca Cola Femsa, which is an, a Mexican bottling company for Coke. 390 mil of holding sin Mexican broadcaster Grupo Televisa. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they didn't have a prenup. They didn't make a prenup at the time. So I guess it is amicable. They've just done this contract, financial contract. And one of the interesting things that came out of this is that Bill is one of America's largest owners of farmland, which not a lot of people know about. He owns nearly 270,000 acres which is about 422 square miles of land across more than 12 states. Wow. I, I mean, wow. two now famous, like, richest people in the world type divorces, Bezos, Bill Gates. Mm. Bezos' wife, ex-wife, got like 80, 80, yeah, 80 billion or something. She gets mm. 2.4. Maybe building a play up. So far, I mean, that was, I don't know if that's it or if there's any more or what. But now that's bumped her status in the women, like the one of the, you know. I mean, I get what you're saying, Alexander. I think steak. 2.4 billion. Eh. <laughs> I'm happy. I get, I get yeah. what you're saying. That uh, what, what's um, what's Bezos' ex-wife? I have mm. no idea. 80 billion, like that's a lot of money too. But Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I don't when, when if, someone, if someone was going to give me net worth 58.4 billion. If someone was going to give me half a billion, I wouldn't complain. If someone was giving me one tenth of a billion, I wouldn't complain. Yeah, but what oh, all I'm saying is just, it's, it's a bit weird. Yeah. Just right, considering okay. the parity of the situation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's the third wealthiest woman in the world, 21st wealthiest individual overall, worth six, 61.4 billion. 
Have you with with um Bill right. Gates Mackenzie Scott with Bill Gates being um single, right? Have you seen all the uh, auditions from all the women <laughs> around like the videos, and they're like very seductive and stuff. And there's all these memes coming up about like you know, uh, your floppy disk. I'll make your floppy disk hard. <laughs> it's all these kind of crap. Brilliant. <laughs> the Bill Gates. <laughs> He goes, you can look in my window. There's all this oh, shit. My it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Oh, that's but it is funny. The, like you, this there's, there's gold diggers, and then this is just blatant. Like <laughs> like Bill Gates, whatever you want to do, so I'm down. <laughs> if they pit, if they if they split their fortune equally, she'd be worth sixty five billion. Who's that? Gates, Melinda. Yeah. So I don't know how much. I don't assume that's everything. That was just talking about the shares. Oh, just shares, but that money-wise. That was just wise. shares. Oh, so, so the portfolio is yeah. only worth two point four billion. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> it, she might leave with sixty billion. Oh wow! 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 I mean, wow. Whole, so you know Holy that shit, you know that whole like Bill Gates. By the time I die, you're gonna give away ninety x percent of. That kind of puts a massive dent in that plan, doesn't it? Yeah, but she I think she agreed with the same, so she might do the same still. I think that was both of them that were like... So then why bother splitting or unless she it didn't in divorce? Want why not just keep it in like a shared account or something? If the whole point yeah. is to give it away. I don't know. Maybe they want to give it away to different charities. Because they, uh, they have their foundation so, together. Bill yeah, and they're Melinda still going to run that foundation. Out, they? they said like it's not going to impact any of that kind of stuff. Do you know um, why uh, Bill Let's Gates um, why. called uh, his software or his um, OS Windows? Because he was, was peeking in it when he saw his wife. I have heard this, but I can't remember. No. I, I don't know. That's a genuine question. Oh, I thought question. you were going to tell us. No, no, I don't know. No. I, I hate <laughs> these, I I hate these articles that have no ending. <laughs> <laughs> this will have an ending. <laughs> no, I have heard this, but I can't remember. I would look it up, but Emma types faster than me. <laughs> if he had his way, it would have been called Interface Manager. However, Windows... <laughs> wait, wait, what, what? Yeah. Interface uh, Manager? Mm, probably oh. I am. Like a Windows like like name prevailed because it best describes the boxes or computing windows that were fundamental to the new operating system. What was that? Windows best describes the boxes or computing at Windows that were uh, that were fundamental to the new operating system. I still don't get it. Windows were essential. <laughs> I was just going to repeat what she said. But does that make because, sense? Because because the Windows is what basically it looked like. They named the Windows. It looked like a window. Okay, so yeah. window, when Windows was introduced, a command did not have to be typed out for each and everything. Instead, there would be icons on the desktop. When the icon was clicked on, the file would open into a new screen. This whole process was known as opening a window. Ah, oh, okay. That makes sense. It's opening a window. And that's the end of TBSW119. It's time to eject our seats and... Uh... <laughs> eject our it's seats. It's time to eject the tape. Uh, and that's the end of TBSW episode 119. We hit topics such as the Mali Mum. We wish her luck. We hit another hard hitting topic about a monkey for a my girl. When we found out he was. He had a good heart. He had yeah, a good heart. Someone, good heart. Someone find out what happened on the way in, please. All From, right. Yeah. We will find that out. We also talked about mushroom, mushroom sneakers, mycelium. Mycelium. Uh, we talked about the sneaker authentication. That eBay is introducing. Watch out for NFTs. We also talked about Bill and Melinda Gates transferring $2.4 billion worth of shares. It's unfathomable. And we talked about what billionaires do on their downtime. And we also talked about what to do to potholes if you want to get them fixed quick. Put peen eyes and Emma will write, uh, will draw her first peen eye and put it up on uh, Instagram. No. She's shaking her head, but she really means yes. And that's about it, isn't it? That's it. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Peace. Thanks for the conversation, guys. Okay, see you.